Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is the game to get to the game. Throughout college football playoff national semifinal, we are getting closer to the kickoff of the Orange Bowl. The Clemson Tigers, well, all they've done this season is win, including the ACC title for a perfect 13-0 record, the only undefeated team in the land. But the Oklahoma Sooners, well, they're not exactly chunk change either. They've won their last seven games, including a Big 12 title. In the second half of the season, they've scored at least 40 points in every game, with the exception of one. That was the TCU game uh, back in uh, late November. So both teams come in red hot, and people might think this is a revenge game for Oklahoma. And in some ways, they would be right. After all, for the Sooners, um, they have a lot of players back from that Russell Athletic Bowl butt-kicking that they absorbed last year. Courtesy of Clemson, in which the orange and blue of the Tigers absolutely ran rough shot all over the Sooners, 40-6, to last December 29th in Orlando. So in some ways, yeah, it is a revenge game for Oklahoma. Um, and another perspective as far as revenge for the Sooners, if you're curious, they've beaten every team so far this season that beat them a year ago. That's right. Last year, of course, losing to TCU, Oklahoma State, Baylor, and Kansas State. And so far, the Sooners are 4-4 four 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 against those teams that beat them a year ago. Of course, it won't be made complete, of course, as far as revenge if they can't beat the Tigers this year. And, of course, we mentioned the 40-6 to drubbing. And I know last year most people across the country could care less about the Russell Athletic Bowl because it really wasn't that much at stake between Clemson and Oklahoma. And, of course, when we talk about people that didn't care about this game, not taking anything away from Clemson because they clearly dominated the Sooners from the beginning of that bowl game, but it didn't look like the Sooners cared at all, and that's on them. They were, no question, dominated. So you don't think that uh, the Sooners have, you know, basically put that out of their memory bank? Yeah, right. The Sooners want to make sure that Clemson, as well as the whole country, knows that the Sooners are a different team. Now, Clemson's a better team than a year ago, and Oklahoma's a lot better than a year ago, and this makes for a very intriguing and could be an offensive matchup between two of the best quarterbacks in the country, of course, with Deshaun Watson of the Tigers and Baker Mayfield of the Sooners. So if you're asking the country who you think is going to win the um, Orange Bowl, the New Year's Eve matchup in which the Sooners are a slight favorite, the country would probably pick Clemson, deservedly so, because, again, the undefeated record, and, of course, Deshaun Watson, the running passing dual threat quarterback who was first team All-American and third in the Heisman Trophy and one of only three players to get a Heisman invite along with McCaffrey and of course the winner um, Henry of Alabama um, he's definitely deserving of those honors is Watson rushing for about 900 yards this year but also throwing for over 3,000 including 30 TDs not bad for a guy by the way that uh, came off a major knee injury from a year ago in fact if he had played in last year's Russell Athletic Bowl, it might have been 76-6 to six instead of 40-6. Uh, to six. Oklahoma had to settle for playing his quarterback, Stout, and that was no question a mountain as it was, as, of course, the Sooners, for the final time, as I'll say this, yeah, got kicked. But Baker Mayfield, yeah, he's no slouch either. The um, winner of the top quarterback or top player in the country, who, by the way, started his career as a walk-on, that was, of course, the Burlesworth Trophy that Mayfield won uh, right after the regular season finale against Oklahoma State. Second team All-American in the Sporting News National Player of the Year. No question, Mayfield has been one of the big difference makers in the turnaround from 8-5 and five a year ago to the 11-1 and one and Big 12 championship of this season. Bob Stoops ninth, by the way. And Mayfield, just like Watson, uh, brings in a style in which really fits the spread offense for the Sooners a quarterback that uses the receivers terrifically, also the backfield. He can throw to either P. Ryan or especially Mixon, and of course the tight end Andrews, but as well, when he has to, can run with the football. And kind of reminds you of Johnny Manziel in a way, in which when the pressure's on, when he needs to flush out of the pocket, when he needs to make something happen, he not only does, but it seems like he does it with incredible fluidity, if you will. Kind of do it with spontaneity. You know, just kind of spur of the moment. That's what Mayfield brings, and that's what drives defenses crazy. Um, so if you're looking at it from a nationwide perspective, I think because of what Clemson did um, to Oklahoma in 2014, also the undefeated record and the fact that Clemson has beaten two teams this year that are in major bowl games, Notre Dame and Florida State, 
Now, you probably have to give the edge to Clemson. But the football percentage index, for what it's worth, as well as the Vegas odds makers, actually like Oklahoma to win this game. In fact, Vegas has the Sooners as a three-and-a-half point favorite, and that line really hasn't wavered much, um, if, if any, maybe a point or a half a point since its initial release. So the Sooners are really being liked by the so-called experts. Now, of course, some media members are going to pick Clemson, but some, by the way, are picking Oklahoma. I think on CBS College Sports Network or their Sports Network um, College Analyst, their, their panel of four, there was a split uh, amongst the uh, four on the panel. So, yeah, this is a game where, you know, if these teams play ten times, they could very well be five to five. Um, they're that well matched. And again, two terrific offenses and two defenses that can get to the quarterback. Let's first of all break down this matchup in terms of Oklahoma's offense versus Clemson's D. For the Sooners, it's got to be this simple. You must be able to protect Mayfield because this is going to be one of the best defenses that the Sooners have faced as far as talent, but also as far as getting to the quarterback. And the thing about the Tigers, you might be thinking, well, how could that be considering how they have to replace 14 starters from a year ago? Fair question. You know, because Clemson, after all, they lost um, five players to the NFL, and I believe four of them came on the defensive side. When I say lost players to the NFL, I mean players that were drafted, um, not counting um, undraftees. Um, and that included... Um, some fantastic outside pressure from uh, Vic Beasley um, from a year ago. He was one of those guys, one of those first-round picks. And Clemson also had another defensive end or an outside linebacker that was a first-round pick as well. This is a tribute to the National Coach of the Year in Dabble Sweeney and the great job that he and defensive coordinator Brent Venables have done in recruiting. They've been able to reload in a lot of ways. I said this on a previous OU Clemson snapshot video I did a few weeks ago in which I said that this Clemson D doesn't appear to be as good as the one from a year ago. I still stick with that, but remember the defense they had last year was ranked number one in total D. This defense is still pretty good, still a top 10 defense, and they can still get to the quarterback, but you know, you can't move the ball on them, and I'll explain that later. But for the Sooners, getting to the point, Shaq Lawson cannot live in your backfield if you are the Sooners. And you know, can Shaq Lawson be blocked? Yes, he can be. Remember against Notre Dame against Florida State, two of the biggest games this year outside of the ACC championship game that Clemson had, Lawson did not get one quarterback sack. But otherwise this year, um, you know, uh, both he and the uh, tandem of uh, Kevin Dodd have been lethal against opposing offenses. 18 combined sacks for those two. It's no wonder that Shaq was a first-team All-American. Keeping that, you know, recent tradition for Venables of All-Americans going. So, you know, you may not have as great of outside pressure coming in, but the inside pressure can be disruptive, especially when OU's trying to run in between the tackles, the interiors. So for this offensive line of the Sooners, you know, for Ty Darlington, you know, uh, for, um, for Alvarez, for those guys up front, this will be a big-time challenge because this defense is physical. And if you can contain them up front, you're going to then deal with a linebacking core that's still good, but not as good as the one that they had a year ago. So that's really where it has to begin for the Sooners. Biggest key in the game, Shaq Lawson in particular can't live in your backfield. Now, secondary for Clemson can play. Okay, McKenzie Alexander, first-team All-American at defensive back. He's a corner. He's good. And T.J. Green's very underrated at the safety. But you get a feeling that if the Sooners can contain that front four of the Tigers, who's very, very good, then Mayfield can go to work because then the ground game will have done their part. Remember, P. Ryan this year, over 1,300 yards rushing, double digits and touchdowns, and Joe Mixon, the other running back for the Sooners, averaging more than seven yards a carry. A little bit of thunder and lightning, if you will. And the Sooners have enough of a receiving core with, of course, Sterling Shepard, the magnificent career that he's had for the Sooners. Hopefully we can see at least one more game uh, for him. And then you have the uh, play also to Deron Neal and uh, D.D. Westbrook. Clemson's secondary, I think, will have their hands full, but they'll only have their hands full if the offensive line can take care of that inside pressure that Clemson, no question, is going to apply with Shaq Lawson. And, of course, don't forget about Kevin Dodd. And the linebacker, Ben Bowler, who's a good one, but, again, Clemson was better at linebacker, in my opinion, last year than they are this year. In terms of defense, yes, no question, all i got to say is two words. And of course, you know exactly where I'm going to go uh, with this, Deshaun Watson. Man, what, what, what a career this guy's had, okay? He's only a sophomore, right? 
only a sophomore. In fact, a lot of the big playmakers for Clemson are just sophomores. But no question, Deshaun Watson makes everything go for this team. And just like OU, Clemson is very dangerous when they will run the four wide receiver sets. And you will see Clemson spread it out, and you will see Watson uh, run with the ball when he has to, but also design runs as well. He's definitely better at this area than Mayfield. But Watson also has been, um, at times, a little mistake-prone as well. Um, he hasn't thrown for as many touchdowns. Remember, he played one more game this year than Mayfield, plus he's thrown for 11 interceptions, as opposed to Mayfield, who will not force it. And Mayfield, of course, only threw five picks for the Crimson and Cream this year. So, just like for Clemson's defensive line, for Clemson to win, those guys have to be big time. Well, the reason why I think a big part why the Sooners have looked so much better since the Texas loss and why they've won seven in a row, guys like Charles Tapper, guys like Matt Diamond, guys like Charles Walker, when lined up on the outside, Eric Stryker, we know how lethal of a pass rusher he is. I think the big thing is that OU's pass pressure comes more from the outside and Clemson's comes more from the inside. So having lane containment is very important. You can't ignore Clemson's other lethal weapon, on the ground, we talked about the quarterback Watson, but also, too, uh, the play of uh, Wayne Gallman. And you have to be able to wrap him up lower body. And speaking of which, um, the receiver, the most dangerous receiver on this field for Clemson, of course, we know that that's Artavis Scott. Not very big. He's only 5'10". But if you don't wrap him up lower body, um, he's capable of breaking a big one, as the Sooners found out um, in 2014 um, in that bowl game. Now, if the defensive line can hold their ground, okay, they can make sure to contain Goldman, then the linebackers. We're talking about, you know, um, we're talking about the um, incredible play that we've seen of Devontae Bond when, when he has been injury-free. He's been an X-factor, and I think he'll be an X-factor in this one as well. Then you allow the defensive backs to stick with their assignments. So for the corners, they know Sanchez and Jordan Thomas, they'll have their work cut out for them because Clemson, Overall, is very talented in the wide receiving department. You'd probably have to say that Clemson, maybe, you know, success-wise this year, is a little bit more talented than OU's defense. But you'd have to say offensively, other than the quarterback, maybe Oklahoma has the edge in terms of offense. So no wonder this is such a slim point spread. My final thoughts on this game, OU and Clemson, boy, <laughs> in the college football playoff. Not bad for two teams that were not even ranked in the top 10 at the beginning of the season. Clemson was 12th while the Sooners were at 19. Of course, one of the big differences is that Clemson could not have lost a game to reach this point. I think if they had lost one game, then the Ohio State or Stanford, as biased as the college football playoff committee is, as far as their love for the Big Ten and the Pac-12, probably would have leapfrogged somebody over Clemson if the Tigers had lost one game. The Sooners had one loss and were, you know, um, in one way fortunate enough to work their way back up, but in another way they've earned this playoff spot. There's no question about it. So two teams, give a big round of applause for getting this far. New Year's Eve in Miami. Yes, I know that Clemson has not lost a game this season. And I know their quarterback is no question something special. And, of course, we'll see him next year as well on the college surface. Biggest difference to me between 2014 and 2015, the Sooners come into this game with more momentum than they had last year and playing a lot more physical, especially in the trenches. I think there'll be a big difference. Of course, another big difference, by the way, yeah, quarterback with uh, Baker Mayfield. He'll be one of the difference makers in this one. Look for a lot of points to be scored in this game, but look in the fourth quarter for the Sooners to get the job done. And remember, you know, Clemson doesn't exactly close up ball games very well. We saw that against North Carolina. Uh, we also saw that, too. You know, they gave up a little bit, you know, against uh, South Carolina. That that score was a lot closer than it should have been. Um you know, the Notre Dame game, they almost let that one get out of their, out of their grasp. Um, in that early October showdown, they had to hold off a two-point conversion in the end. And Clemson-Louisville, if Louisville had a field goal kicker, you know, that thing probably would have gone overtime, and who knows what would have happened. So I think the Sooners will have more of a finishing touch in the fourth quarter. 38-30, I see no reason why the Sooners' quest for the national championship stops now. And I think they will be in Glendale, Arizona, come second week of January to face the Tide or the Spartans for the national championship. I think the Sooners keep the victory train rolling and win this one by eight points. I'll have my post game of OU Clemson, more than likely New Year's Eve night. Remember, the game will kick off Oklahoma time at around 3 o'clock on ESPN. Again, Thursday, New Year's Eve. Should be a terrific game, but I look for the Sooners to have the edge. Boomer Sooner, and Happy New Year.